Thanks, everyone, for coming for our session. Um, I've been told if you want to, you can rearrange the chairs a little bit to make it more comfortable for you to actually see the stage. Um, this one is more of a presentation. It's not as much as a hands-on lab, so you don't really need your laptop if you can go with a, like an hour without checking email. <laughs> I know it's hard no to dance. I know. So thanks, everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk about uh, Google TV. And we're going to talk about uh, the current version of Google TV. Uh, myself, I am Christian Kurtzke. I am the developer advocate for the Android platform on Google TV. I joined the team about a year ago, uh, and I've been working with the preloaded Android applications, so the Napster, Pandora, Twitter apps, uh, all the good stuff that's on your TV today. And with me is Paul. Uh, my name is Paul Saxman, and I'm uh, relatively new to the Google TV team, but I uh, have quite a bit of an uh, Android background. I built quite a few apps. and. Uh, I truly believe that uh, Google TV is the new frontier for uh, Android app development. Or the Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we also have here is, let's see, hopefully we have a next slide. Yes. So um, we have this thing called speaker meter. We're going to use it throughout Google I.O. Um, you can give us live feedback either on Twitter. I'm not going to check it here, but I will look at it later. Um, or speaker meter, this is for each session. You can just try and scan the QR code and give us feedback uh, on it later. And uh, we are going to have a Q&A at the end. So, um, and actually, when we do have that, uh, there's a microphone up here for everybody to use. So feel free to line up near the end of the, the talk. OK, so actually, just to give a quick hand, a show of hands, so how many of you are actually Android developers and have developed Android apps? Awesome. Very good. And how many web developers do we have here or people who are not so familiar? Good, good. So hopefully we'll, we'll try to keep it pretty high level and pretty generic. So we should have something for all of you. Uh, we'll go a little bit into detail, but here's, here's the overview. Yep. Yeah, so here's a breakdown of what Christian and I are going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to start off with an overview of the Google TV platform and then uh, start to talk about uh, building native Android apps and web apps kind of at a high level. Uh, we're then going to talk a little bit about how, uh, how you decide uh, what to build, because it's kind of a tough question which direction you want to go sometimes. Uh, we're then going to segue into building, um, building Android apps for Google TV uh, a little more deep, deep, deeply, uh, covering how to get set up with the environment, uh, Google TV displays, uh, types of apps, and tips on navigation and layout, which are very pretty, very important. And uh, finally, we'll be sure to keep uh, some time at the end for Q&A. Uh, since this is boot camp and there's a lot of news coming the next couple of days, uh, today we're going to focus on what Google TV is now and uh, how you can start developing for the plat platform today, uh, but won't be talking about the next version of Google TV yet. Um, so please keep in mind, uh, keep that in mind during the Q&A. And uh, however, we do think that there's a, a lot of great information in this talk for developers interested in Google TV as a new platform for uh, Android development. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's talk about uh, the Google TV platform. So uh, what is Google TV? Uh, Google TV is a platform that opens the living room to, uh, to the web, making television more relevant and engaging. It accomplishes this by bringing together a sophisticated and open applications platform, which is Android, uh, and a full uh, HTML5 capable web browser, which is Chrome. And also it brings uh, all this together with the power of search. Uh, like Android for mobile devices and tablets, uh, it's one platform for multiple devices. So from a little bit more of a technical point of view, um, just also some of the, you know, clarifying some of the conceptions that people have. So we really want to bring internet content and uh, interactive content together with your existing TV content. So Google TV, it, Sometimes in the press after the launch, there was this uh, sort of connotation that it would replace your existing cable subscription. And it's really not the intention. So we are trying to bring new content together with your old content that you already have on your TV. So most people, at least here in the US, sort of the standard setup is you have a satellite box or a cable box. And your cable box connects to your TV. And you have a DVR. And you have all really great setup with an audio system and everything. What we want is we want Google TV, in this case here, I'm showing the Logitech box, integrate with your existing setup 
Um, it would sit between your cable box and your TV and it would bring you additional content from the internet. So you can, today already, you can have, um, on your web browser, you can go to optimized, uh, TV optimized websites, um, or you can run some of the pre-installed Android applications. So if you already have Google TV, um, you can run the Pandora app, you can run Netflix app, you can stream movies, and it brings it to the largest display in your house, to the TV. So to, uh Let's take a quick look at the history of Google TV to help understand where it is today. Um, it was announced uh, just about a year ago at I.O. And uh, a few months after that, uh, the Sony and Logitech Google TV devices were available, to the mar or available on the market. Uh, those devices are based on Android 2.1. And uh, like Christian mentioned, they have several Android applications preloaded. In uh, December of last year, uh, the Android remote control app was, uh, was released, which uh, was received pretty well. And in January of this year, we announced two new OEM partners, Samsung and Vizio. And uh, finally, at this last March, uh, we released an iPhone version of the uh, remote app, which uh, also was pretty highly received. So uh, looking at this timeline, uh, something you should note is that uh, Google TV is still a relatively young platform. As uh, with Android on mobile devices, we brought Google TV to the market uh, quickly so that we can uh, get users' feedback. And uh, this year, we have collected a lot of great feedback, and we are incorporating it into Google TV uh, so that it can become a great device. Yeah, and I think also um, what's really interesting about Google TV is um, it will be an interesting platform for Android developers. We have announced uh, last year that we will bring market and we will have uh, the ability for developers to develop applications for it. So just look at it like the G1 device. Um, it's still very early in the curve. But also, um, earlier this year, uh, as Paul mentioned in January, at CES we announced two new hardware OEMs. So there's going to be a large footprint of devices in the market. So what is it from a user's point of view? Um, one thing you always have to keep in mind when you develop applications, what is the context in which your application will be used? And I think what you have to keep in mind is uh, when you develop an app for Google TV, sort of put yourself in the mindset of your user. It's like lean back on a couch in the living room after a long day at work with a remote control and probably a bag of chips in the other hand. So um, it's really a different mindset than uh, what your user has when they interact with your website. Um, when you're maybe in the office, you're between meetings, you're checking a website, you're I don't know, going to your favorite e-commerce website or something. So the TV is more of a leisure, more of an entertainment device. And people spend a lot of time consuming content. So what we really want to accomplish with Google TV is make the, the TV experience more interactive. And just at least uh, when you develop an app for it, um, it gives you one path for the user where they normally wouldn't have uh, your app in front of them. And we know a lot of people today, when they watch TV, they have their mobile phone or maybe their tablet, they check Twitter or they check some of their other social networks. And um, the TV has the potential to bring all this together. So here's another home screen, or here's a snapshot of the home screen in case you haven't seen Google TV. And I know last year a lot of people who were at Google I.O., they actually received a Google TV uh, box, an early version. So this is what it looks like. It, in the background, you see the live television. So this here was a travel channel. You just click the home button, and it overlays the home on top of your live TV. And it gives you very quick access, in this case, to Android applications. So you see a menu on the side here. You can have browser bookmarks. You can have Android apps. And here is just a selection of some of the Android apps that are preloaded on the box. So um, you have what we chose, a portfolio of typical apps that people may want in their living room. You have something for sports fans. You have your uh, Netflix. You have your Pandora. So I think it's. It's an interesting platform for users to get content while they're watching TV. I think uh, you know one point, uh, one thing to point out here too is it's, it's not just a big phone. You know, I mean, it's it's really a different type of device with a different type of interface, even though it's all built on top of Android. Yeah. So this this Android app, I mean, it's already a, sort of a first indication. By the way, the home screen, of course, is also implemented in Android, um, but it's it's an indication of how you should lay out your app. Um, 
you know, make it very, very light on information. Keep a lot of open space. People don't want to see pages and pages of text on their TV screen. It's not an e-reader. <laughs> so the other component of Google TV is the remote control. Um, if you think about how people interact with your Android application today, um, virtually all Android applications use a touch interface, use a touch screen. Um, Google TV, people sit about 10 feet away from the screen. It would be very inconvenient if they have to get up and walk to the TV and touch stuff. <laughs> so I think that's why we inv invented remote controls. That's what TVs used to be. <laughs> Um, so Google TV comes with remotes. Um, what we want is a full QWERTY keyboard. I personally really hate when I have to search for shows and I have to have an on-screen keyboard and navigate through A, B, C, D. So all the Google TVs come with a QWERTY keyboard. Um, they do have a mouse pointer of sorts. So the Sony remote, for example, it has a little optical mouse joystick. Um, but one of the main things is uh, it's not a touch screen. So keep that in mind also, and, and we'll go over some of the implications later. Uh, one key that I want to highlight is the search key. We really believe that Google TV should help you find content that's relevant for you much faster. After all, Google is really a search company. We know a lot about searching. So we want to make it very easy for you when you watch TV to find content. So there is a dedicated search key. Um, for the Android guys amongst you, it brings up the system search, the system search box, which we call the quick search box. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So on Google TV, when you press the search key and you enter a term, um, it will go through the system search. It will bring you content from different sources. So in this case, it mainly YouTube content, but it could also be content that's relevant for your um, TV channel. So if you search for something where you have say a DVR recording, or it's a show that's coming in the future, you can schedule a recording. Uh, and for developers, it's really cool, because as you see in the bottom here, you can actually contribute results. So in this case, the YouTube application and the Amazon application um, contributed results to this. So if you develop an app that wants to get in front of a user and maybe you know, search through your media library or search through your photos, um, you can also contribute search results here. On this screen, I want to point out the little icon in the bottom. So this is today where the notifications show up. Um, I've heard people describe the Android notification as sort of the new inbox. It's like people get so much email, you don't even read email anymore. But when something shows up in your notification bar, you typically, it grabs your attention. So this is where notifications show up today. And in this case, the Pandora app, um, as you may know from your cell phone, um, every time it plays a new track, it notifies you just to keep you current if you're interested what you're listening to in the background, maybe. So in this case, um, Pandora threw up a notification and said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm having a really great new sound in, that I'm listening for. And the comp copyright owners of those probably don't mind. <laughs> So um, yeah, so this is our Pandora notification box. And it's also a great way for you as an Android developer. It uses the regular Android notification APIs. So if your app has something new and exciting going on, you want the user to either be reminded of, or maybe you just want to get in front of the user again, you can open up a notification, or you can send a notification, and the user can open up the dialog. So, those last things, the search, the notification, it's already pretty good integration, but Google TV, as we said earlier, it's based on the Android platforms. And one of the really cool things you can do in Android is you, your application can integrate pretty deeply into the platform. So on a mobile phone, you have a lot of ways. You have live wallpapers. Um, you have things like widgets and so on. And on TV, um, there is a lot of ways. For example, here you see a live folder. So uh, the user can configure the live folder showing the tweet timeline to show up right on the home screen. So you can imagine as a developer, um, it's not just a very standalone experience. It's not start an app, interact with an app, and go back to the TV watching. But we really want to enable developers 
to get in front of users and get integrated into the system. I think that's one, for me, I'm an Android guy, so I come from the Android world. It's one of the really cool things uh, that Android enables you to do. So now that you've seen all the things that are possible, um, why, why would you develop an app for Google TV? I mean, besides being a really cool platform, um, it's also typically the largest display in the house. Um, every time I visit my friends now and they have a little picture frame that shows like their last vacation photos on like a two inch LCD or whatever, four inch LCD, I'm like what's the point? <laughs> Just use a TV, you have a 60 inch picture frame. So it's the largest display and you can just go wild and imagine what you as a developer could show on, on this screen. I mean, there's a lot of really cool apps that are possible. Um, it's also connected to a really amazing sound system. Typically your TV or your hi-fi stereo in the living room, um, you don't need to plug anything in. Google TV is already connected to it and you as an app developer um, can use the sound system. And the other thing is, um, Supposedly, in America, people spend five hours a day watching TV. Um, keep in mind, this is not America. <laughs> I know you guys probably spend a lot more time on your computer, but um, this is a stat, um, just looking at the media habits of teenagers, eight to 18 year olds. Even if you take everything else together, gaming consoles, listening to music, um, playing video games, sitting on the computer, they spend, still spend 42% of their time more than computer and video games together just watching TV. So being able to create applications that run on the TV I think is really exciting for developers and I think that's also why we have gotten a lot of really excited developers who, who keep asking us, so when, when can I get my app onto Google TV? And, as we said, we're not going to make any new announcements today, but we stand by what we said last year. It's the market is coming later this year, and we're working on it. We're very focused on it. So uh, now that we uh, know what the Google TV is, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, how to develop for Google TV. Um, from a developer's perspective, uh, Google TV is really about the power of choice. Um, Google TV is. Um, it's actually Android and the web in one box. And it's not just the web, but it's a HTML5 in a full uh, Chrome web browser, which is different than most Android devices. So basically, this isn't your, uh, your grandmother's web on TV. I mean, this is a full web experience. Um, so given that uh, developers can't take advantage of the Android platform and a full Chrome web browser, uh, how should they uh, decide what type of app to build? To help answer that question, uh, let's first take a look at what the Android uh, platform has to offer. Uh, Android takes the Java language to new heights with uh, APIs for layouts, graphic rendering, search, media, databases, uh, the list goes on and on. And since these APIs are shared across all Android uh, devices, uh, code developed on top of these APIs can be reused on mobile, tablet, and Google TV devices. And in some instances, uh, the same app can be used on all three types of devices, and it's, uh, that's entirely possible. Uh, the apps themselves can be installed on a device with uh, just a couple clicks and they automatically update if the user allows it, which is a benefit to both users and developers. Uh, back to the APIs, uh, since many of the Android APIs access the hardware directly, uh, developers can leverage system hardware to accelerate performance and gain more control over how system resources are utilized. Uh, as a software platform, uh, Android has a number of features that help developers design rich user interfaces and uh, streamline information flow. This list is actually, the list on the, the slide here is actually just a small subset of what Android has to offer to developers. Uh, we've covered some of these features already, uh, such as notifications. Um, and many of these will be discussed uh, further at I.O. But in summary, the Android platform gives developers uh, full control over both hardware and software keyboards and buttons, uh, most, most notably the back and search buttons, which is uh, actually a big benefit. Uh, the ability to share data with other apps and display custom search results. The ability to uh, push notifications to users from background services. A full multi-threading based on Java threads. And a very rich application framework, which includes intense activities and services. Um, all you Android guys are going to be very familiar with all this. Uh, the main takeaway here is that the Android platform gives developers a lot of control over design of their apps um, in terms of the interfaces and their architecture. Uh, there are definitely a lot of opportunities, a lot more opportunities to hear about uh, Android features at I.O., but for Google TV in particular, 
Uh, don't forget to miss uh, Christian and Jason's talk on Wednesday. And that's this guy here, <laughs> in case you're looking for him in the hallway beforehand. So uh, here's another very good example of uh, the power of Google TV and the Android platform. Uh, here we see the, uh, Google, the uh, quick search box again. Uh, the user has entered discovery uh, for her, his or her search query. And uh, we see results from the web and the users line up like we'd expect, which is very useful. And uh, I see uh, Mythbusters Tablecloth Chaos coming up in seven minutes, which uh, <laughs> actually one that I think I've missed, so maybe we want to cut this a little short. Um, we also uh, see that there are results from YouTube, Napster, and Amazon. We see these services listed here with their exact number of search results since each service has an Android app installed on Google TV, and each app has a searchable content provider for the information it manages. By using Android's APIs, uh, developers can deeply integrate their app with the Google TV platform. And what's unfortunately not shown here, uh, apps can actually share information with one another. Oops. Oops. So uh, on the other hand, uh, for Chrome and the web, uh, developers have access to HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, and the Flash platform, all of which are very, very powerful tools for content delivery. Uh, using this suite of technologies, it's relatively straightforward for developers to uh, create interfaces that work on multiple form factors and displays, including mobile screens, medium and high density tablets, uh, desktop computers, and t televisions. Uh, there are a variety of tools for developing web applications, uh, many of which were created or refined over a number of years to make web development very quick and easy. Um, and if you already have an existing web application, uh, you can likely reuse most, if not all, of your content and code when you're creating a Google TV enhanced website. If you do develop a truly great web application, your app could be featured on the Google TV Spotlight, which highlights the latest and greatest web-based Google TV apps available. And finally, uh, with the web, there's no need for developers to download or install your app, and updating is seamless. As soon as you publish its content, it's available to uh, end users. And uh, along those lines, uh, for more information, if you're interested in uh, building web apps for Google TV, uh, don't miss Chris and Dan's tech talk on Wednesday as well. Uh, different times, so you could actually make it to both. So uh, here's an example of a web application optimized for Google TV. Uh, the first thing that you'll likely notice is that this app doesn't look, doesn't look like a traditional website at all. It looks like a TV application. However, if you're familiar with HTML, CSS, uh, you know that this page could easily be uh, modified to look uh, good on mobile devices, tablets, or PCs. It's just a matter of changing, uh, changing a few parameters around. Uh, this app gives TV viewers easy access to the information that they're likely to want via streamlined interface with easy to read fonts, plenty of padding, and simple navigation. And uh, it also has full content search capability, which is not integrated into the Google TV platform, uh, but Google TV really has no problem uh, searching web content. So just to wrap up in summary, I think for both for web developers and for Android developers, uh, just some things to keep in mind is uh, really using large font sizes. Um, your application is typically viewed in a living room environment. People sit far back. Reading paragraphs of text is hard. You don't want too many line breaks in your text. Um, the other thing is on television. Keep in mind there's two major resolutions that are supported by modern televisions. It's called 1080p and 720p. So that's the number of lines. So one is 1920 by 1080, the other is 1280 by 720. And also, um, really, when you design, and sometimes it's different when you're in a mobile mindset, you always try to squeeze as much information as you can on the limited number of pixels. Uh, on TV, just use larger icons, keep more space between the icons, uh, make it easy to navigate. And uh, don't overload the user with too much information. What we have found just over the last uh, couple iterations that we've gone through is um, it's better to have more of a progressive disclosure. If you have more information available, make it visible to the user, but then give them a choice to either go into more details. Uh, sometimes it's easier to just show, say, a short video clip the website that we saw that Paul showed with uh, just like a TV show information, having the cover art there or having a screenshot there is probably a lot more relevant to TV users than having the full bio of all the actors. If they want that information, you can give them the option to get it, but um, try to keep the, the amount of information on the screen pretty light. 
Uh, so with uh, all the benefits of these two platforms, uh, it still might be hard to decide uh, which one to use to develop your app. So ultimately, you might have to make a pragmatic decision. Uh, there are a few questions that help guide you in uh, making this decision, though. Um, basically, are you currently working on an Android app that you'd like to see on Google TV? Or do you already have a web-based application that you could migrate? Or if you've uh, yet to start working on an Android app or website, uh, do you have existing code or expertise that you could use? For performance, uh, do you need access to Android's low-level APIs, or is the performance that you get with Chrome enough, uh, which is actually usually more than enough? And finally, do you want to share information with the Google TV platform or other Android applications, like we saw with Search? Uh, if so, building an Android app is definitely going to be the right choice. And uh, there's actually a really good talk coming up uh, if you're still looking for more information about uh, HTML versus Android. It's uh, also going to be at Wednesday. It's a different time than the other two talks, so I think you could. You can, do them all three. <laughs> yeah, you can do them three in a row, and after that, you'll know everything about Google TV. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, definitely be sure to stop by and check that out. So, just uh, yeah, in summary here. Yeah, I uh, was just going to say uh, before we dive into uh, the specifics of building Android apps on Google TV, um, here are some uh, pointers to getting started with building web applications. Um, the rest of the talk is going to be about Android, so. Uh, you know, this is your last chance to, to look this stuff up. Uh, again, be sure to stop by Chris and Dan's Tech Talk on Wednesday. Visit the Google TV documentation website. Uh, lots of great information there. Uh, right now, you can see it's uh, targeted towards web. But, uh, you know, we have Android documentation coming as well. Uh, join the Google TV Web Developers Forum, where there's lots of discussion about building web apps for Google TV. Uh, and finally, uh, check out the Google TV website gallery, where you can go for inspiration for building your own apps. Even if you're sold on developing a native Android app for Google TV, uh, these resources have a wealth of information for developers that you absolutely shouldn't, uh, shouldn't overlook. So. Cool. So now I would like to share with you some of the you know, best practices for developing Android apps and just some of the lessons we have learned. Uh, and also for people who are not familiar with Android, I'm actually very excited to see so many of you already are Android developers. So I go over some of it a little faster. But uh, in order to develop Android apps, uh, all the tools you need are available to you for free. You can download them. Um, for Google TV, since it's just another compatible Android platform, um, technically you can use the same tools. And really, the difference is you're developing for a large screen device. Um, what you can do with Android is you can have different resources for different screen sizes or different resolutions. So in this example here, I've just created a regular uh, Android project. And I've created resource folders for uh, HDPI and XHDPI resolution. And I'll explain a little more about this later, why those two. But um, if you are familiar with Android, you know resources can be things like icons, can be graphics, or can be layouts. So here is uh, just another screenshot uh, showing you some of the dialogues. And uh, the regular Android SDK already gives you the opportunity to create um, qualifiers for high density, large screens. And if you want to, you can add no touch to it um, just to explicitly call out that this is for devices which don't have a touch screen today. The other um, feature in the Android SDK that you can use is um, you can create custom layouts. Um, typically, when you install an off-the-shelf Android SDK today, it will come with predefined layouts or predefined screen sizes for the layout editor for major like phone resolutions. So we have the 480 by 800 for the Nexus uh, class phones. Or we have the 1200 by, I think it's 1280 by 800 for tablets. Um, if you want to develop for Google TV, you would have to create your own custom layout size for the screen resolution of uh, the Google TV. So the way you would do this is you just click on the little custom icon, and you can give it any name you want to. You can call it Google TV, whatever. And you would configure it with the resolutions that you expect your TV to have. And I'll share a little bit of information with you. So the typical TV resolution that we find is uh, 213 DPIs. So that's a good value to use. 
Um, and I just called this a 720p resolution. And I defined the screen sizes as a uh, 1280 by 720 screen size, high density. Of course, it's a landscape device. So that's one other thing to keep in mind when you develop applications. Um, TVs typically only come in one orientation. It's, it's pretty hard to reorient the TV. <laughs> it's easier for yourself to lay on the couch. That doesn't still make it a portrait. <laughs> so um, that's just one way to define a layout editor. And um, here's the reason I don't work in the UX team. <laughs> so I just used all this and I created a mock uh, for a Google TV application. So I used the parameters that I've just defined um, to create a layout. And you can use the, uh, the Android layout editor in Eclipse. And you can just drag and drop uh, very simple UIs. I've just taken a couple buttons, uh, a couple icons, and few check boxes and stuff and put it together on a UI, probably not the best work I've ever done. But it brings across the point, uh, you can use the layout editor with those custom layouts to create uh, layouts for large screens. So why would you go through all this hassle? Um, you can also create an emulator today. So you can use the, uh, the Android SDK emulator and uh, as we said earlier today, um, Google TV runs on uh, API level 7, so that's uh, Android 2.1 Eclair. So if you want to be uh, compatible with today's version, you can just create an emulator based on this, and you can set the screen size to 1280 by 720, which is a reasonable value for 720p, and you set, again, the LCD density to 213 and pick your value for heap size. Um, what you can do with this is you can start an emulator and you can actually run your app on an emulator. Um, here's an example, an app running on a desktop emulator. Um, it does still show the phone menu bar on top if you display the menu uh, or the, the top icon bar. Just ignore that for now. Um, why would you want to do that? Well. The reason is you can test your app, you can test it up out on a large screen, um, see if your layouts scale, see if your resources scale. Um, it's just an exercise to sort of get ahead of the curve and get your app ready for, you know, maybe in the future. This is not a replacement for running it on a real TV, but I think for a developer, what I have found is uh, going through, for example, this exercise with uh, some of our partners, it's, it's sometimes Android, uh, applications, they look really nice on a large screen. They basically just work. If you do all the right things, you use relative layout, you, you, you use uh, scalable nine patch images, but running your app on a large screen emulator, um, it will point out typically a few hard coded assumptions that you may have made, or it may point out some of the bugs. So I think it's good practice, um, especially now that we have tablets as well. Um, just try and run your app on a large screen, see what it looks like, and it will help you, I think, create better Android applications all the way around. So you may wonder how we came up with some of the constants that I, meant, uh, that I mentioned. So you may have picked up, I used large screen. Um, the first question that everybody has is, if you're familiar with Android, um, actually this phone here, the Nexus S, is considered a large screen. Um, how come my TV is not bigger than an XSS? Um, it's very simple. If you look at it from a 10-foot distance, you'll notice that the TV actually appears fairly small in the, in the distance. So we just took the large screen, sort of, we, th we believe that a TV should have about as much information on it as your cell phone application, as your mobile application. And the other constant that I came up with, uh, the resolution, so I used uh, extra high density or high density, depending on uh, 720 or 1080p. Um, but if you walk up close to a TV and, and you really stand like as close to your TV as you would stand to your tablet or to your phone, you notice <clears throat> the physical resolution on the screen is actually about 50 pixels per inch, or you can just do the math. And how do we get from 50 pixels to 200 pixels? It's again the distance. Um, the other advantage of this is if we choose the, the extra high density, this will scale all the Android uh, DPs, the display independent pixels or resolution independent pixels. 
So if you're familiar with the way how Android handles um, uh, DPs and you do the math, you will, you will realize that your apps scale approximately twice as much. So if you have um, extra high density is 320 DPs as compared to 160 DPs for normal density. So if you just have an Android app and you don't do anything and you just run it on TV, um, and, and you use DPs the way we recommend in the documentation, then your app will scale all the assets twice as much and you will actually look reasonably well. So this is really to make it easier for developers, as Paul said earlier, to create one app that runs across all devices. And I've actually, for exercise purposes, created a few apps that look really well on different, different displays. So you can create really one layout that scales nicely from a regular phone size through a tablet all the way to a TV. Um, another bit of TV technology that I want to point out is um, few of you are probably old enough to remember that TVs <laughs> used to have television CRTs with like scan lines and electron beams and a whole lot of physics and stuff. And <laughs> it, it's actually really cool technology that's unfortunately still haunting us today. So <laughs> the concept of scan lines um, is still there. And if you look at uh, 1080p resolution today, so the word 1080p, it's actually the 1080 scan lines that you would have on an electron, uh, on a good old fashioned CRT. And that is really the physical addressable screen size that is available in TV. Um, the other thing that you may notice next time when you watch like your favorite news channel or your favorite sports channel, uh, you'll probably notice that they never put something that's really super important all the way in the corners because actually you never know how much shows up on your consumer's television. So the, if you look at the TV specs, they actually specify about a 5 to 10 percent safety margin around the edge because back in the days when it was electron beams sipping across CRTs, you never knew if they were actually calibrated properly. So TV broadcasters typically show the relevant content, game scores or stock tickers. They show stuff that's really important about you know, a couple pixels off the edge. And just to be on the safe side, the recommendation is keep about 10%. Um, so you, you're pretty safe that all the TV manufacturers will actually work with this. So what this means for a developer is, I said earlier, we have two main resolutions. We have 1080p and we have 720p. But when you create an app, you can be pretty sure that it will not have the full screen resolution running on your TV. And that may be mechanical issues or me mechanical reasons, like your decorative aluminum bezel may actually cover up a couple pixels on each side. Uh, when you set up a Google TV, we calibrate to the, vis to the visible area on your screen. And when you run an Android app and you do, for example, a canvas that's full screen and you do a get with, uh, you may end up with fewer pixels. And so the numbers that I included here, this is actually the worst case scenario. So this is the 10% margin on each side. So that's, that's really the minimum, but also don't code to the minimum. So my advice would really be um, expect the worst, but have relative layouts that then float and use right aligned, left aligned, top, bottom, and make your UI look pretty that way. And I think the best practices for Android developers to really create a great app that really stands out from the rest is, uh, is really using the dynamic layouts, think about the overscan, test with the minimum resolution, test with the maximum resolution. One concept that I know we have been talking about almost as long as Android is around is uh, nine patch images. And especially designing for TV, nine patches get even more important because if you think about it, um, basically the amount of memory that you need for your on-screen assets for things like buttons really grows with the square basically of your resolution because you need X and Y. If you double it, you have four times as much memory for your little icons. So using nine patches to do the scaling for you is really an elegant way to do it. 
And especially, um, I really encourage developers to not put like pre-rendered text on their buttons or something, but use the Android mechanisms to just bring a nine patch for the button background and then put a text over it. That's uh, great for internationalization as well. Right? Definitely, yeah. I mean, it, it, the way what I found is running Android apps, just random Android apps on Google TV, it really shows which developers were sort of keeping with the best practices, going the extra mile, keeping it really dynamic layout. And I think it really helps you find a couple bugs in your app. And keep in mind your user, 10-foot design. You are creating apps for somebody who just came home from work and really just wants to kick back in their recliner and watch TV and interact with your app, maybe. So. Um Google TV apps actually come in uh, lots of different shapes and sizes. And uh, how you design your app ultimately depends on the uh, use cases that you're targeting. Uh, you can certainly have one app for multiple platforms, uh, which is by far the hardest to implement, but uh, really the easiest to maintain. Um, or you could build separate apps actually tailored to each of your use cases, uh, which are you know, for phones, tablets, and Google TV. Uh, this will allow you to target different but uh, related use cases by each app and take full advantage of the higher resolutions of Google TV. Uh, this is primarily true for full screen assets on Google TV since it has a much higher resolution. Uh, and a third option is to build a companion app that targets the same use case as an existing app but is designed specifically for the Google TV experience. Yeah, I think speaking of the companion app, one thing to keep in mind also is the TV screen is usually a shared screen in your living room. Um, your family is watching, maybe on Sunday you have your buddies over and they're going to watch the TV. So as an app developer, keep that in mind, what that sometimes means. So having, for example, my tweet stream on TV, yeah, sure, that's cool. I mean, that's public information. But having my personal inbox show up in notification every time somebody sends me a tweet, you may not want that when your buddies come over on Sunday. <laughs> So uh, a couple of quick tips on uh, actually conquering the TV. Uh, if you really want to get the greatest bang for your buck when building your Google TV app, uh, be sure to reuse as much of existing Android code as possible. Uh, and once you've identified what code you can reuse, focus on user interface specifically. Uh, building specialized user interfaces only where needed. Really, the idea here is uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, and only redesign where necessary. So here's a couple examples of TV apps. And so this is the mobile app from CNBC. And what we did is when we created the TV app for CNBC, we worked with the team and we looked at the mobile app and we looked at the website. And we found that the TV app should probably be different from both experiences. On the mobile phone, you want to have your stock portfolio, you want to have quick access to information. The website is really to go find a lot more out, find background information. So for the TV app, uh, the team actually brought in some of the interactive content, or not interactive, some of the visual content from their CNBC channel, and they added the broadcast clips to the uh, stock information. So they reused a lot of their Android code from the mobile phone. So the whole portfolio management, all the app logic is mainly reused from their mobile uh, app. And they also added the broadcast information. So I worked with the CNBC team over the course of last year to create the, the app that's on your Google TV today. And what's actually really exciting is um, they did almost the opposite of what you would be able to do. So they used, uh, the mobile, uh, they used the TV experience and then actually optimized this to the tablet experience. Um, I saw they just, I think a couple days ago, launched their tablet app. It looks very much like a TV app. And so I think having the large screen Android devices now is really a, an interesting opportunity to create apps that work on larger screen and maybe bring some more interactive visual content. Um, here's another app uh, which you may be familiar with. It's the Pandora Internet Radio app. So um, it's, this is the mobile app. So they had a very clean, simple user interface showing the cover art, showing the artist information and giving you a very quick you know, thumbs up, thumbs down sort of interface. Um, they were actually able to reuse most of their layout and most of their code 
for the TV app. So this just goes to show if you have a user experience that makes sense in mobile and makes sense on the TV, um, you can virtually use most of your app just as is. Um, what they also did um, to optimize is they used the key codes for our um, remote control. So on the remote, you can uh, pause, forward, play. And so they just used all those uh, key codes to make it much easier to interact with the music player. So you don't have to use the mouse cursor and like go over and click on buttons or use a five-way navigation. So those are just two examples um, that show how you can take a mobile app and actually reuse a lot of your work and uh, transform it into a TV experience. So uh, before we wrap up, uh, there's a couple more tips that we want to uh, pass on to you guys before you start building your uh, Google TV app. Um, Christian just mentioned uh, five-way navigation, which is uh, actually accomplished via the D-pad. Um, Google TV devices have full QWERTY keyboards and often have uh, trackpads or some other form of um, touch-based navigation. However, the primary mode of user interaction with Google TV is, is five-way or, or D-pad, which is directional pad. Uh, when testing your apps, uh, keep your thumb on the D-pad and not the trackpad so that you can ensure that users are able to navigate quickly and easily in your app. Uh, same is true when using the emulator. Uh, focus on your keyboard and, the, uh, and your uh, directional keys as opposed to using your mouse. Um, especially keep D-pad navigation in mind when you're uh, designing your layouts. Uh, what we see here is a fairly standard uh, app interface, which includes a tab bar for changing between uh, content. Um, a, a vertical list view in the center, and a button down at the bottom there. Um, this interface is relatively common on mobile devices and tablets since it's very compact and easy to control with the tips of one's fingers. Uh, however, things get more tricky if the user navigates this interface using their uh, D-pad. Uh, the issue is, is that if the user wants to go from the tab to the button, uh, they actually have to scroll through the entire list uh, in the center there. So what we recommend in this situation is uh, to actually re reorient your, uh, your layout. Here we've actually taken the tabs and the button, moving to the left and right of the vertically scrolling area. Um, the user can actually use their, the directional pad up and down to navigate the tabs, up and down to navigate within the, uh, the vertical scrolling list, and uh, you know, left and right to scroll between those three um, controls. So um, still a clean, compact interface, but uh, now it's very easy to navigate using D-pad. Also, one thing to keep in mind is um, what's very apparent is a lot of apps, typically are, when they're designed for uh, portrait mode, they have the, the user paradigm where you have list views and then button, buttons in the bottom. Um, when you have a list view that's about four feet wide, uh, it gets really hard to navigate. So if you have like a checkbox on one side and the name is on the other side, um, Keeping list views narrow and having multiple columns is usually a much better user experience in general. So with that, um, let's see, summary. We've pointed out there is a huge opportunity to create applications for TV, and there is a large variety of devices to target now, so especially for Android developers. I mean, we're basically adding new devices and we're adding new form factors as fast as we can. I mean, we just gave you tablets, uh, now there is TVs, so there is, there is a huge opportunity, I think, to, to leverage your Android skills. The different screen sizes are definitely giving you a whole new opportunity to create new applications. Um, suddenly you have basically a four square foot or so display in the living room that you can work on or you have a whole home theater. Uh, and the good news is Android already has a lot of built-in mechanisms to support all this. So the Android APIs and the Android, like all the mechanisms and the best practices allow you to create apps for phones, for tablets, for TVs, and who knows what's next. And then also you can create apps that easily support multiple platform versions. So as Android developers, you're probably already familiar with uh, all the different ways how you can create apps that run well across different different apps. So I, I would like to do the one little Steve Jobs thing. But wait, I have one more thing for you. So actually, I'm, I'm really thankful that you all stayed to the end. So what I want to share, for, uh, share with you is we don't have this here today, but starting tomorrow, you can go to the Google TV booth. And we have a little sandbox on the third floor. And 
pick up a flyer. So we have this program that we call the Google TV Fish Tank. And what we, what we want is uh, if you submit your ideas and if you give us great ideas that you would want to implement on Google TV, um, you can sign up and uh, we will look at the submissions and we will select recipients on a, on a rolling basis to receive developer devices. So those developer devices will be Google TV devices enabled with ADB and you as a developer can run your own apps and you don't have to just run them on the desktop emulator. Uh, I must say it's, it's a really cool experience to see your app the first time on your own TV at home. So um, come back tomorrow to the uh, Google TV sandbox on the third floor, pick up a flyer and we'll get you set up with a really cool development environment. All right. <laughs> One question. Can you please use the microphone? Sure. Uh, hypothetically, say that you're from Sweden. Uh, <laughs> 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 it, would it still be possible to enroll in this program? Um, you would have to check with our guys. I, I believe right now we're focusing mainly on the US, but I think if you have an incredibly compelling application, I encourage you to talk with our business guys. I'll think about, about that. that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes, please. If your app uses native code. Yes. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> so right now, um, since Google TV is also runs on Intel processors, um, we don't support native code currently. Is that in the works to, to add that to the emulator? We're, we're, we're super focused on getting this out, um, but I don't have a timeline on that. A question David? about the Chrome browser within Google TV. So what type of difference between the Chrome browser within Google TV versus the Chrome browser running on standard PC, especially on the Chrome App Store part? Um, I don't know the answer about the Chrome App Store, but it is very much a Linux-based Chrome browser. So by the way, um, if all of you have more questions, we have office hours and a sandbox upstairs where we have engineers and we have actually two units uh, that you can see some demos on. So that's on the second floor, kind of like this direction roughly. So and I'll be hanging out there for a while and I think Paul's gonna be there most of the day too. Uh, yeah, we got a couple more minutes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm coming from a YouTube partner channel uh, mm -hmm. based background. Um, and my question to you guys is, are you planning on developing additional YouTube interfaces for Google TV beyond what clearly looks like a very YouTube beneficial search type, search type uh, box? So what Google TV already does is we integrate with our video sitemap search. Mm -hmm. So if you have video sitemaps for your content on your site, that will definitely be surfaced. Um, beyond that, um, I believe we have the YouTube leanback experience and you can also download some of the um, CSS and some of the samples to get started. So if you as a partner want to create optimized sites. So right now we have in the spotlight, we have for example a Vivo application which uses some of the YouTube hosted content but adds additional just cover information and stuff to it. So I think if you want to get really creative, um, you, could crea you could use wrappers around the YouTube experience. Thanks. Hi, can you hear me? Um, so I actually had a, one good question and a sure. bad one. <laughs> the good one is, um, how about identity? I mean, one of the big things is, you know, TV is shared, but all the other devices you're talking right. about are individualized. Are you going to do anything to allow multiple users, et cetera, on the TV side? So currently we don't have that yet. And I think Android in general, it's more of a single user yes. experience. Yes. So this is great feedback and, and we know this is something we need to work on. So yeah. So the bad question now was, um, <laughs> all the stuff I'm hearing is still kind of treating the applications as a secondary app that's overlaid on your content. Yes. But are you actually at some point going to start allowing context to be shared between them so you can actually bring up apps related to what you're watching without the user being in the mix? I think that, that is definitely, a, I think that's a very valid use case. 
Um, what we want to do in the future is um, have APIs specific for TVs. Um, we're not there yet, so stay, stay tuned. <laughs> I was wondering what would happen if you have an Android app that uses WebKit. Um, WebKit runs on Google TV today, so you can just open up a web view. Um, we've actually seen a couple of the developers do that for content, so that would work. It doesn't have to be rewritten because the primary browser is Chrome. Uh, no. Not okay. at all. Yep, the web view still works like normal. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>